Hello everyone and welcome to my annual graphic novel collection update and I just wanted to start with showing you both of the shelves that we are going to go through for the total of my collection and we are here in the bedroom and here is the main shelves with the DC and Marvel comics and right in the next room in the living room there is all the independent comics so I'm going to show you those as well and uh, if you want to watch the whole video you just keep watching but I just want to keep you all informed of the whole of the collection before we go right into it. And in here in the living room you can see the rest of my collection which is of the Swedish comic books, the DC Absolutes and all the Image and Vertigo and other independent publishers comic books. And these shelves still has lots of space in them, but sometimes it's gonna run out. And yeah, that's the whole collection as it goes for the space that it takes up. So if you want to join me and go through all of these books, you just keep on watching. And let's do this. Okay, so we begin here at the top shelf, farthest to the left, which is the... Marvel Omnibus shelf and yeah there's a lot of stuff here and a lot of new stuff I actually doubled or more my Marvel Omnibus collection now within the last year yeah and starting off we have the Brian Michael Bendis alias and uh, Bendis's new Avengers Omnibus that sadly never got a second volume for a lot of people I was one of those who actually was wanting to have one. And then we have a series that I thought I'd never actually would get to read, but that is the Ed Brubaker Captain America Omnibus Collection. And I was um, pleasantly surprised with the writing and artwork as well. It's a really good series that. And then there's the Frank Miller Daredevil Omnibus, these are the reprints ones, and also here I was gladly surprised of both story and artwork, and I never thought I would get into Daredevil as I now have. And this is not in the collection anymore. I had the Bendis trade paperbacks with all of his run on Daredevil. So with having that back in mind, there was no problem getting into the Ed Brubaker take on Daredevil. And these are, of course, the reprinted versions. If you can't tell by the covers, maybe you can tell by these are much thinner kind of volumes. But still saves me some space for new books, so, yeah. And then the Frank Miller Electra Omnibus, which, not really maybe a book for me, but it had some great artwork in it, and I actually enjoyed the one-shot drawn by Miller himself. And, yeah, it, it's cool to have. If you watch the Daredevil Netflix series, you, I think you definitely could get into this. And then my one and only X-Men comic today is the new X-Men by Grant Morrison. And it actually, I'm going to say this over and over again, but it surprised me how good it, of a story it actually was. I thought I would have trouble getting into this, having only watched the X-Men movies. And uh, yeah, the team is good. A lot of characters that I recognize, some new but you are informed of their past and everything, and it's a good one solid read. You can actually go in and go out with this one book. And that was good for me because X-Men is yet another big universe per se, or a world of characters that I think would be too much for me to get into because I like so many stuff already. Then, of course, uh, here at Parvis to Write, we have start off the Amazing Spider-Man Omnibus by Stan Lee. 
and going into the Michelini and Todd McFarlane's run. And the Silver Age Spider-Man books are a read for say, let's see here, each and every issue is an introduction like it is your first comic to read and that could get a little boring reading trying to read five to ten issues per day but eventually you get through it and I still haven't dug into volume three it's still shrink wrapped but I'll start very soon and I'm hearing that that is where Stan Lee actually get his grip on how to write Spider-Man and but you know after 100 issues one would think so and of course the McFarlane ones and then we go into the next shelf okay so here we have the second shelf and keep it on with Marvel Omnibus the w way I've staggered this is to have all of the Omnibus end here and then not continue with the deluxe editions because then if I get a new Omnibus I would have to move everything around so I'm trying to keep to have shelves end with a certain type of book so I don't have to move a whole collection when just getting one new book. So that's the method in this and yeah Spider-Man by Roger Stern and then we go into the David Michelini Eric Larson one which I have read in the epic collection and that is Round Robin and Return of the Sinister Six I would believe that would make up this omnibus and then there's of course the Spider-Man Clone Saga and I'm still waiting for Volume 2 before I start to read that. Then the Spider-Man Tangled Web, I chose this variant. And then we go into Ultimate stuff like Ultimate Spider-Man and Ultimate Spider-Man Death of Spider-Man. Which I've only read once, I cannot believe that I haven't reread re them in, for su such a long time now. But there's a lot of stuff to read when it comes to new stuff also. Then we have the uh, Jan van Hickman uh, Avengers Omnibus, most recent purchase. And I don't know if I'm going to wait till Volume 2 comes out before I start reading that even. And then we have the Deadpool by Mark Way Omnibus. I uh, used to have the Deluxe Edition, but I traded them for single issues in Justice League just to complete my Jeff Johns collection. And yeah gonna reread that soon after they publish volume 2 in next year's uh, spring yeah and then we have Miss Marvel that was a phenomenal read which I made in just one day and it's just 19 issues so it's really no big event at least when it comes to modern issues and then the Superior Folks of Spider-Man by Nick Spencer which was a fun read and yeah, I think it was a, a day's read worth as well. And then we have the Ultimate Comics Avengers. No, not the one that you want. This is the second one. This is volume two of all of Ultimate's Avengers. And, but yeah, it's still a good read. It has a new take on the Red Skull. And let's see here, I think we have Blade and Ghost Rider in this also. And then here to the right, you can see uh, some pop figures that I still have left. And then we go to the next. Okay, and here we start with the Marvel Deluxe Size Editions. And I think those books right over here you barely can see, but these are the Marvel original graphic novel line. And those that I picked up was the Spider-Man Family Business and Rage of Ultron and the Endless Wartime. If you would skip one of these, it would be Endless Wartime. And then you have stuff from the Bendis era of Avengers, and starting off with Avengers Disassembled, as well as the companion for said Disassembled. And all, of, not the tie-ins per se, but all of this book, the Avengers Disassembled is collected within the New Avengers Omnibus, so you really don't have to pick this up unless you're a completionist, which I don't think, I don't see myself as that when it comes to Avengers. And then we have Mighty Avengers, which you basically just own if you have the 
new Avengers run as well as the theme books because this is a companion series itself. It feels like all of Bendis story is scattered along these events and then you go into an issue of New Avengers and then Mighty Avengers and then go back to the event. And there's even more titles involved than these that I have. But yeah, here we have the New Avengers Deluxe Size Editions and of course Volume 4 is the big thief amongst these. I was lucky though, most of my collection is built upon luck. And this definitely counts for it. And yeah, this continues from the Omnibus and straight forward to the finish of the set. Then we have Secret Wars event and it was good but I really liked Secret Invasion much better. But the best of them was the Dark Avengers because then it had a character that I was familiar with which was Norman Osborn and really to see him in a different light. Then we have Siege which is more of a four event and I don't know really what led up to Siege so there's books missing all over the place. And Daredevil End of Days which is like your not not really your return of Dark Knight Returns tale, but it's a good ending for the character. It is uh, written by Bendis and he made the greatest, as of now, for me at least, Daredevil run there is. And then we have Iron Man Extremis and Iron Man by Matt Fraction, Volume 1 and 2. Actually really good. Iron Man stories and these take place in between and after Civil War. Then we have something that it, I don't think too many people has read that is Runaways and it is written by Brian K. Vaughan so your same writer as for Why the Last Man and Saga and this could easily be Whatever your point of view, this could be your second or first choice when it comes to Brian K. Vaughan because it is taking place in the Marvel Universe, but you don't get too many hints of that. This could be its own independent series about these kids whose parents are all supervillains and the kids find out about it and they decide, let's run away. We don't want to have anything to do with this and... That spawns out the series of Runaways. But let's uh, get on with this. We have the Spider-Man collection now. That, that is my pride and joy when it comes to the Marvel collection. And we start off with Spider-Man Blue, which is simply a Jeff Loeb and Tim Sale story about Gwen Stacy. And what I really got of it was how understanding Mary Jane is of uh, Peter Parker that she will always be the second most loved person in his life. Um, Mary Jane will always be second. And then we have the, I think this is Mark Miller's take on Spider-Man, the, the Marvel Knight Spider-Man, and this is beaten all to hell, this book. I got it second hand on eBay, and someday I might search for a replacement copy. And when going through the JMS run, you get into Spider-Man The Other, and of course Spider-Man Civil War, which is another luck book, I would say. And a eBay hunt, sort of. And then we have the Spider-Man Back in Black, and the Spider Island, and Companion. Okay, and here we have the Spider-Man Ends of the Earth, and then we go into the Marvel Now era basically with all of the white backs from Marvel's deluxe size editions. And first off is of course the Superior Spider-Man Volume 1 and then going all the way up to this randomized book, The Amazing Spider-Man Who Am I? which is nothing that you really have to get. And then we go into Volume 3 of Spider-Man with Dan Slott's run still and what really led up from that volume was Spider-Verse 
And then of course you get a second volume after that, which should be volume four, starting off with uh, Amazing Spider-Man Worldwide Part One. And eventually volume two will come out and they'll connect to the Clone Conspiracy Deluxe Size hardcover. And then we have Spider-Gwen, simply the first half of her run. There is a second volume coming out. And then we go into the rest of the Ultimate books. And here we have the complete Ultimate Fantastic Four run, which I got cheap, which was good because I only enjoyed half of it. I would say up till volume three with the psalmist and everything, that was cool when they tapped into that dimension. But after that they tried to do cosmic stuff that I didn't get into and I don't think many others liked to. And this volume six, this here, is half of it is issues, half of it is an encyclopedia for the Ultimate Universe characters. So nothing much there. Then we have the Ultimates Volumes 1 and 2. And then after Ultimates we have Doomsday, Divided We Fall and Cataclysm, the Ultimates Last Stand. Which is basically before Secret Wars 3, I would think. And then we have the Ultimate Spider-Man Deluxe Size Editions Volumes 8 to 12, which is everything if you plus up with the Omnibus. And then we go into Spider-Man and Kick-Ass Volume 1, which I had in a deluxe size edition. And here we have a shelf for the standard sized hardcovers from Marvel. And continuing from the Kick-Ass deluxe size edition, we have the Kick-Ass 2 Prelude, Hit Girl, and Kick-Ass 2 and 3. Then we go into the... I don't know what they call these editions nowadays premium size editions. We have uh, Cloak and Dagger, Crime, Crime and Punishment, Death of the Stacys, which we really don't need now with the latest Amazing Spider-Man Omnibus, Volume 3, and then Return of a Burglar, which is... Yeah, Return of a Burglar that shot Uncle Ben, and it's about in the number 200, I would say. And then the Sinister Six, which is the same material that is collected within the David uh, McLean and Eric Larson omnibus, as well as the Epic Collection. Then the Death of Jean the Wolf, which was a really good tale, and I would think that this has something to do with uh, Venom as well, when it comes to origin. And then Spider-Man Reign, which is sort of Spider-Man's own... Dark Knight Returns tale, but not as good. And then a very weird edition, I would say, uh, Kraven's Last Hunt. It's very odd size, and I can't really place it anywhere. And then, of course, begins the brand new day dance out era, and the Spidey Brain Trust and everything, and all the stories that they came up with. And that, of course, spun out of One More Day. So I'm really hoping for this to actually get a reprint one day into a bigger format like an omnibus. That would be really nice, actually, because Brand New Day is a good story arc and features, of course, spinning out of that event comes stuff like uh, New Ways to Die, in introducing Anti-Venom, and a favorite of mine is Election Day, because I really liked the character Menace, which was more of a Green Goblin character than any before, I would say. And then you have the Gauntlet, which reintroduced the original Rogue Gallery, I would say, in a different light. And then you have stuff like, uh, like say... I would say Big Time is another good jumping on point when it comes to Spider-Man. It's Rim's first work on Spider-Man. 
Not really. It's his first work on the main run of Spider-Man. But it's a really good start-up point because, of course, uh, he starts off at his new company and stuff is really working out for him. But, of course, when it all goes to shit right into the next volume in Matters of Life and Death. But this could be its own video when it comes to Spider-Man timeline and everything. And then he just keeps on up until Dying Wish where we then jump into Superior Spider-Man. And then we have the Ultimate Comic Spider-Man by Brian Michael Bendis featuring Miles Morales. And it's a really shame that they haven't reprinted these hardcovers or at least would print a omnibus of them because you could easily fit all of these five volumes into one omnibus. It's only 28 issues and it would really sell because people like Miles Morales. I like him too. And then we have my one and only Wolverine comic which is Origin. And I don't know why I haven't sold this yet. Then we just have one little called prose novel, but it's not really. It's it's an odd size, but it is the actual comic inside, and as well as a DVD for the Extremis Motion comic. But I was so disturbed by. It. It being such an odd sized book, so I went ahead and bought the deluxe size edition. And then here first in the corner we have an extra copy of the Amazing Spider-Man 3. This is a mismanufactured copy, so I keep it as a reading one. But it is not up to your normal standards. And that's pretty much that shelf. And then here on the last shelf for the Marvel books, we have simply the trade paperbacks, which I try to keep to a minimum when it comes to all of my collection, except for the manga ones, of course. And yeah, if I could recommend some of the stories here, it would be the original Clone Saga. I know, this isn't the... Clone Saga, what you think about it's not the Ben Riley ones. This is one about Gwen Stacy, and it, it's really good drama. That is what Spider Man is, and you really get that in this Clone Saga one. And you get a complete story, I would say, for the time with that book. Then you have the complete alien costume saga, which I don't get why they wouldn't just print this with the epic collection. But they wanted it to be its own thing, and when then we have, of course, the Epic Collection ones, and the ones I have is the Goblin Last Stand, Ghost of a Pass, Craven's Last Hunt, Cosmic Adventures, Return of the Sinister Six. And Round Robin, which is, except for the two first volumes, which is the basically Amazing Spider-Man Omnibus Volume 1 by Ditko and Lee, those are all that's been printed as of now. And then we have the Civil War event, trade paperback, and the very first books that I bought getting into comic books, the Spider-Man Noir trade paperbacks, which I really should reread someday. These aren't thick books, so it shouldn't take more than an hour. But yeah, that is the Marvel collection. Now let's get into DC. Okay, so we start off with the mid-shelf, which only has one door glass door on it, and it keeps all of my rebirth... New 52 and Earth 1 books and starting on top we have them in alphabetical order and ordered by color. So we have the Action Comics by Grant Morrison volumes 1, 2 and 3. And that is all that I got into the New 52 Superman basically. I think I had the Superman Unchained also. And if you count this I had almost forgot that I have it. 
the Superman Wonder Woman Volumes 1 power couple, which was a decent read, but I never continued on the series. Then we have, of course, starting from here, Batman by Scott Snyder and Greg Capullo going up till Volume 6, and we're gonna get into that why this only goes up to Volume 6. And then we have Batman and Robin by Tomasi and Gleason, Volumes 1 to 5. And Detective Comics by Tony Stanley, Volumes 1 to 5. And then right here in the corner, The Dark Knight, and which is a very underappreciated New 52 series. It dwells in much more into the villain psychology more than the hero's tale. And is highly recommended. Second row, continuing with Dark Knight, and then goes into the Gil Simone Batgirl. And this was a really good series, highly recommended, but I don't recommend you going on after Gil Simone's run, but that is just my opinion. And that goes all the way up to volume 5. Then we have Batwoman, which has the same problem when it comes to the writer exchange and everything. Batwoman Volume 1 Hydrology is beautifully drawn and it is a good start off, but it really starts off with Greg Rocca's run right before they kicked off the New 52. And then there is the Batman Superman New 52 series. This is Cross World Volumes 1. Great tale on its own. You could just buy this and be happy. But I stayed on the title for all the single issues. And then I double dipped into the premium size. This is volumes 1, 2, and 3. And then we have the Batman event books. So I have them last just because they don't have any numbering on them. So you have the companions for Night of Owls, which is all the titans, basically all bat titles. And. The Joker, the Death of the Family event, and the DC Comics Zero Year. And that was all the blue titles for that era, and then we have the red ones, which is starting off with Earth 2 by James Robinson, and then later on by Tom Taylor. A Really good take on it. I mean, it is Earth 2 tale, so it really could do anything but what that they wanted, I think, with this title. And it went some places. And then we have start off of Francis Manipool and Brian Bachelotto's The Flash Run. And here we continue with The Flash volumes one, uh, 3 to 6. And then there's a event here in the middle of it, the Forever Evil event. And we also have the Just League of America by Jeff Johns. This was truly not his equivalent of Just League and Just League Origin and everything that is getting a absolute edition soon. Can't really wait for that because it is a good story. And introduction to the new 52 Just League. And if not that, one of my favorite. Oh, wait, where it is? <laughs> There's Stranger War. I thought it was a deluxe size. Other way, I really enjoyed Injustice League with the uh, Meso virus and everything. And drawn by Jason Fabok. And then we have, of course, the Brian Azzarello Wonder Woman run, volumes 1, 2, and 6. And then the whole reason why I split up all the volumes from the New 52 era is because of this event, Convergence. It was not the best, I think people would say, but it changed up all of the designs of all of the later coming hardcovers after that event. So what I did was I split them up. So you see Flash, Volume 6 ended there. So I simply stacked it next to Convergence and then kept on going with all the other titles. So 
here are the last three volumes of The Flash right there in the corner. And as you can see on this row, we continue with Justice League that took place after Convergence, that is the start of the Dark Side War, which is the greatest event by Jeff Johns, I would say. And drawn by Jason Fabok. Excellent. I mean, there is better events, maybe the Infinite Crisis is a better one, or Blackest Night, but when it comes to Justice League and the Dark Side War, it was the most condensed story I would say. It only took three books to complete the whole story and it was an epic tale. Uh, all the other books had much more tie-ins and a much bigger scale of them, but I think this you can comprehend a lot better than all the other grand scale events that is made. And of course there is an omnibus coming out collecting all these three in one. Then we have the Meredith Finch and David Finch One Woman. And you can take it or leave it if you want to. And then we go back into Batman. So I just kept on with the red, just because Convergence was red, so now we go back into the blue ones. So Batman's volumes um, 7 to 10. So that is the only title I think from the New 52 that had to have 10 volumes. And Batman and Robin, volumes uh, 6 and 7, and Detective Comics 6 to 8, oh, 9, and Batman Superman, volumes 4 to 6. And then we have yet some other events during the New 52, and the Joker once again, but this time it's Endgame. And... Then another event that I don't really, the consequences of this book really doesn't play anymore, I think, but I'm not reading the right title. I don't want to spoil this, but yeah, Robin War, yet another new 52 event involving the Batman family. And then here in the right corner you can see the start of, of the Earth One books with Superman by J. Michael Straczynski, which is my first impression of the Superman character in comic book form. And here on this final row for this shelf we have the Batman by Jeff Johns Earth One and Wonder Woman by Morrison and then Teen Titans by Jeff Lemire. And you can really skip the Teen Titans one. I think there is better tiles out there of it. But the only second one that I have read as for now is the Jeff Johns one. But you can take it or leave it at that. And then we have my Rebirth books, which is not that many, but they are going to publish more. So what we have here is the All-Star Batman and Robin, or All-Star Batman by Scott Snyder. Never re really understood why they would retake that title after the Frank Miller, Jim Lee run of it and then some crossover event of Batman the Night of the Monster Men Trinity yet another event that is Justice League versus Suicide Squad and then as of now the two deluxe size versions that I have from Rebirth is the Rebirth issue itself in a deluxe sized hardcover and Superman Action Comics. So that's it for the later titles. Now let's get into the main DC shelf. Okay, so now we have one of my favorite shelves and that is the DC Omnibus shelf. And starting off in sort of alphabetical order and start off with numbering the 52 Omnibus which is a weekly title series written by Jeff Johns, Grant Morrison and Greg Rucka also Mark Wade and Keith Kiffin so a whole lot of brains worked into this title but it really worked that is the amazing thing and then we have the Batman by Neil Adams Omnibus which um, I read almost 
the complete thing except for Odyssey because I read that once in a deluxe size and I swore that I would never read that shit again. And then we have Batman Nightfall Omnibus Volume 1. I think I'm holding on to Volume 2 and 3's release before getting into this because I have already read it in the paperback format. But it's nice to know that they are releasing this in an oversized format. Then we have the Brightest Day Omnibus, an event that is not too liked within the community, but I actually do. And yeah, you can give or take, but it is the second event right after Black Knight. Then we have DC One Million Omnibus, which if you were considering buying it, you should, because you don't need anything else when it comes to this and it sort of works out like it is written by Grant Morrison and sort of works out like a sequel to Result of All-Star Superman but I can't remember in which order they were written which was published first but with the main story intact it really could work like a sequel for All-Star Superman. Then we have Jeff Johns' The Flash Run, and Ma then the Francis Medical and Brian Mishlato Omnibus, which I featured in one of my High Quality Books overviews, and it is really a beautiful book, and beneath the dust jacket and everything. And then we have the Gotham Central Omnibus by Brubaker and Rucka. Yet another good series. I think I finished off reading the book in three days. It was that good. And the same thing goes for each and every volume of the Jeff Johns run on Green Lantern. I think I finished each and every one of the books within two or three days. And yeah. The binding, I would say, also is improved within the later two volumes of the first. And another thing, I, whoops, bumped the camera. But another thing is that they have started reprinting these ones, so I'm very happy that the logos are identical on my versions. And here on the second row for the main DC shelf, keeping on with the omnibus format, we have Hawkman by Jeff Johns, which you could give or take. I actually liked it just because it crossed over with some of the JSA stories and they first introduced me to the Hawkman character in a deeper sense than the animated series ever would. And yeah, it really works. It is a very complicated origin tale though when they try to mix up the Golden Age and the Silver Age origin tales of Hawkman. And of course we have the very pride and glory, the Infinite Crisis Omnibus. I am very fortunate to have it and I'm very glad to have it. It was one of the greatest reads that I ever had w with a DC event and that is just because this is in chronological order and everything within it. But of course you could pick up all the paperbacks and actually read it as so it is within the Omnibus itself. Then of course the Jeff Johns JSA series, which surprisingly was much better than I anticipated it from the beginning. The volume one was kind of slow and the material from volume three I've already read in premium format uh, hardcovers. But what really surprised me was the middle of it, volume two, where you have established the characters and family ties and everything and the history of them. And this is where you get full outblown stories involving pretty much every member you can see on the dust jacket. And then we have some DC uh, slash, uh, I think this is Wildstorm, the Planetary Omnibus by Warren Ellis and John Cassidy. It's uh, really its own thing and it's really good still. A good read and you don't have to read anything else DC, you can just get this title and get right into it. So that is the Planetary Omnibus. 
then you have Superman, the Death and Return of Superman omnibus, and I'm hearing that the Exile omnibus is coming out, which is the events leading up before this one, so that's good news. And I really like this, and what most people say about this omnibus is that they read up till the death of Superman and then it's downhill from there, but I have to disagree. I thought it was much more interesting after he he dies and you have to see the consequences of all the families and how everyone around Superman was affected by this. Then of course we have the Teen Titans Omnibus by Jeff Johns, which I... If not this is the thickest one, this one is, but this is a 1400 pages book something. And a good read of that, but it doesn't... It has some gaps between issues that was not written by Johns. Still a good read. And then last but not least, what I am currently reading as of filming this video the George Perez Wonder Woman omnibus. So the first omnibus here is both uh, written or I believe the synopsis of each of the stories is written by, Je by George Perez and also drawn by him. And the second volume which is the one I'm reading now is 100% George Perez's writing but there is another artist on it. But I think I've read this actually kind of faster than the volume one and the artwork is still pretty damn close to Perez's own artwork and that's the DC Omnibus shelf okay so here starts the DC deluxe size edition shelf and this is the only shelf as of right now there are much more oversized deluxe size edition in my Marvel and independent comic book collections but that is mainly just because I only buy Batman basically and some Justice League in this oversized format but first to the left here we have the of course standard volume of Killing Joke and another unappreciated character uh, Batman Adventures Mad Love actually pretty good and it's based on the animated episode of it. And then there's the Dark Knight Returns prelude to the essential read of the Dark Knight Returns. And I would say read only half of this book because Dark Knight Strikes Again, never again. And then we have uh, Batman Year 100 by Paul Pope and Batman Gothic by Grant Morrison. That is his very first, I would say. I don't really know. I'm uncertain now if Gothic came first or Arkham Asylum, but I think Arkham Asylum really is how Grant Morrison broke into DC and Batman. So we got the work on Gothic later words. And then we have um, Arkham Asylum, Living Hell. Uh, written by Dan Slott, so that was something I had to buy just to see his take on it, but it's not really a Batman story, it's much more of an Arkham setting and on the characters within the asylum itself. And then we have uh, some Lieber Mayo books and Batman Noel, and that is... Uh, uh, Christmas Carol with uh, Batman characters should reread this, but I don't think I will until Christmas. And then Batman Deathblow after the fire, and this introduced me into the character Deathblow. I mainly bought this because I wanted more uh, Brian Azzarello artwork of Batman. And then we have Batman: The Dark Knight, Golden Dawn. And this is the pre-volume for the New 52 started, also drawn by David Finch and uh, Jason Fabok. And it's really good, but it had a sudden abrupt ending. Then we have Damien, Son of Batman, which is a sort of Elseworlds story, I guess, just because... The Batman is not who you'd think is Batman. 
at least within the continuity of this publishing of the book. And then of course, what is a stunningly good read is Batwoman Elegy by Greg Rocca and J.H. Williams III. And I don't know where I read this, but someone said that something that really should be done is Sandman done with J.H. Williams III's artwork. And after reading this book and the New 52 one, I really support that idea because that would be awesome if you're familiar with Sandman stories and everything and Williams artwork. Then we have two basically copies of each other. These are the Brian Azzarello and Eduardo Rizzo uh, noir version and deluxe version. So this is basically in black and white and this is in color. And this in color is the latest uh, the latest published book of the two. And then we have Batman Two-Face, Face with Face Deluxe Edition, which works itself right into the Grant Morrison take on Batman. With the Black Glove Deluxe Edition, uh, R.I.P., The Return of Bruce Wayne, and Whatever Happened to the Cape Crusader. And then it goes into my Unwrapped Editions, and I promised myself to pick up each and every one of these Unwrapped versions I don't care which title, they can do Suicide Squad, uh, Unwrapped, and I, I would pick it up. Pretty much anything, just because it's good reference for you when you want to draw yourself. And it's much better to have a reference of a Unwrapped book, more so than a colored and finished product, because you can see the line work within these ones, so this is the cheapest you get for a artist edition, I would say, because the artist edition would be the same regular size that it was originally drawn in, but this is a good option in that, and you get a complete story as well. So we have Hush, and uh, Batman Rap by Andy Kubert, which is basically stuff from R.I.P. and whatever happened to Cape Crusader, I would say. No, that's wrong. But we also have David Finch, which is basically Golden Dawn. Let's see it. Yeah, it is Golden Dawn. And it's also some of the first issues of the New 52 series. And Tony S. Daniel, that is the equivalent of R.I.P. And Justice League Unwrapped by Jim Lee, which is the Justice League origin, but all in his own pencils. Then we have the very first crisis event, or really there are a lot of crisis events before I'm following this one, I would think. That is the Crisis on Infinite Earths Deluxe Edition. And beautifully drawn by George Perez and writing, of course, by Mar Wolfman. And then we have uh, Deathblow, the character that was introduced to me in the Batman Deathblow by Azarello and... It never occurred to me that the character was uh, thought upon by or created by Jim Lee. So I bought this one and really enjoyed the artwork, but writing really isn't his strongest suit. And then we have two Green Arrow, and that is the Archer's Quest. This picks up right after Kevin Smith's Absolute Edition. Which I think they would, from the start, they were gonna publish that as a deluxe edition as well, but then we went in and made an absolute of it. And Green Arrow by Jeff Lemire, and it is actually signed by Lemire himself. Then we have more Crisis books that Identity Crisis by Brad Meltzer, which is a really good one. I think I've read it three or four times now, actually. And it's really strong event, I would say. Then we have the JLA Earth 2 by Grant Morrison. And the animated movie plays fairly close to this one, but there are some differences in between, of course. And JLA Year 1 Deluxe Edition by Mark Waid. And it was a fairly good read, a bit slow at some points, but if you're not familiar with all the characters that they introduced, that's how it should be. 
I think the issues I had trouble with was when they introduced the Doom Patrol. Then we have uh, Kingdom Come, the 20th anniversary of the Lux Edition, and then Grant Morrison's Multiversity. Then the New Frontier by Darwin Cook, and Superman Unchained by Snyder and Lee, and right here in the corner, Watchmen. So here are the standard size DC hardcover collection, and like most of it, it is mostly Batman. And starting off from the left, we have the Batman Shile of Dreams, which is by a Japanese artist, but I'm uncertain on the writer. But it's a, it's a good take, and I do think it actually has a sequel, but I forget the name and I haven't picked it up. And then we have the Batman Joker Celebration of 75 Years. You can wait another 25 years and pick up the 100 uh, year anniversary, I would say, because it's, it's probably going to include all of these issues plus more. And when, then we have the Fred and Joy, uh, the Leatherbound books. Whoops. Hit you again. So here we start with the main, I know. So here starts the standard size DC hardcover and like most of everything it is mostly Batman books. And starting off on the left we have uh, Batman Child of Dreams by Kia Asamaya <laughs> or however you pronounce it and it's a manga style Batman but I'm uncertain on the writer if it's also from Japan and then translated. Then we have Batman and Joker, a celebration of 75 years. I would say wait another 25 years and buy the 100th celebration version because it's probably gonna have all of these issues plus more classics. And then the Pride and Joy, the Long Meadow Press, Leverbound Batman books. And this one is the complete Frank Miller as of the time. And yeah, here you can see a page from year one. And here's Dark Knight Returns. And then there's also the wanted Santa Claus dead or alive inside, which I think he only drew actually. And then the Joker stack deck. And same company, Leverbound, and the Batman book, if I didn't show you, had silver lining on the pages, and Joker 1 has gold on the edges. And if you want the material that is in this book, you should basically be able to buy the Joker Celebration book, and that's pretty much the same Silver Age and Golden Age issues as this one. Then we go into smaller modern press books like uh, Batman meets the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, which was really good, and uh, just getting into turtles right now actually. And the Joker by Brian Azzarello. Uh, I guess it's sort of a sequel to The Dark Knight. And Batman Arkham City by Paul Dini. So this takes place in between Arkham Asylum and Arkham City, building up to what then is Arkham City. And it was decent for a game story. I have just read Injustice by Tom Taylor, but and I know that is good. But what really, really struck me was the Arkham Knight Genesis by Peter J. Tomasi, and this is then the origin tale of the Arkham Knight, and if you've played the game, you know who it is, and this is a very interesting take on the character, and I really much enjoyed it. Then we have uh, Batman Through the Looking Glass, and yeah, Sam Keefe, his artwork is really, really special. 
but it works for a Mad Hatter centric story. And then we have All Star Batman Robin Boy Wonder by Frank Miller and Jim Lee. It's not finished and never will be finished. And yet I hate myself and sometimes thinking about picking up the absolute version just because I want oversized artwork by Jim Lee. But of course I would never read it. But yeah, that's that's how it goes sometimes. Uh, Batman Europe and cover by Jim Lee, but he's only on it for one issue, so that's to draw you in. And then there's all these other great artists, of course, within it and a okay story arc with Batman and Joker having to team up. And Batman Rules of Engagement, uh, early story by Diggle and Batman by Doug Mensch and Kelly Jones. And then we have uh, another version. I showed you the unwrapped Batman and here's another version of Hush by Jim Lee in the premium sized volumes one and two hardcovers. And after I had read Hush for the first time in the unwrapped version, I bought basically all the titles that had Hush within them because I thought it was would be as good. So I bought Heart of Hush and Streets of Gotham, the House of Hush. But of course, none of them or at least Heart of Hush was a decent story at least, but not the equivalent of the original tale. Then we have uh, more Morrison, and that is Batman, the Resurrection of uh, Ra's al Ghul. And then we have Tony S. Daniels' work with the Battle for the Cowl, which you don't need to read, but it works as a good in-between story between Final Crisis and... Uh, the Batman and Robin series by Morrison. Then you have uh, Batman Long Shadows. Uh, Life After Death. And I, I don't know if this is out of order or not, but then it's Time and the Batman and Eye of the Beholder. And then, just because I didn't know where it would fit in within the continuity exactly, I put the road home right here at the end of it. Then here we have Batman Robin Dark Knight versus White Knight, which, uh, if you want to the complete volume one of Batman Robin, started by Grant Morrison, this is all you need, and the absolute version. And then Scott Snyder's first work, on Batman, which is the Black Mirror, which is a fantastic story, actually. It takes place under the Detective Comics title, and he really shined on this. Nothing he has written has come even close to the thriller-esque kind of setting and story as Black Mirror, I would say. And, of course, gorgeous artwork by Jock and Frank Avila. Then we have Birds of Prey, the the Gail Simone run, or the later Gail Simone run. I actually think she wrote a lot more than this, but this end run and the death of Oracle. Then we have all of the Blackest Night events books. So this is basically double dipping, at least when it comes to Blackest Night and uh, all the Green Lantern centric books. Not all of these tie-ins were in the Jeff Johns reprinted omnibuses, but I had these also so I could just take them out if I just want to read Black Knight's storyline. Then we have DC Comics Sequential Art of Amanda Connor, which has some split, split up issues on each of the stuff that she has worked on. I think there's a miniseries of Power Girl within it that is complete. And then we do go into Jeff Johns' Flash run, and Flash Rebirth, I think still today, is the greatest Flash story that I've ever read. And it was the first one that, and having the name Rebirth, it really is a good introduction into the character and all the characters around Barry Allen. 
Then there's the Road to Flashpoint and the Death of a Dastardly, or the Dastardly Death of the Rogues, that is a tongue twister. And uh, of course, uh, Flashpoint, that is getting a unwrapped version soon, so of course I'm getting that. Then DC published a online series later on in hardcover, these two. Heroes Volume 1 and 2, and if you are a fan of the TV show, you get each and every issue, I would say, but I'm a hardcore fan of that series, and I barely tolerated these ones. I mean, they're fine, but they should stay in as an online series, and yeah, that's that. Uh, Infinite Crisis, I know I did show you the omnibus, but if you just want to read the main title story of it, I kept the regular sized in the Crisis hardcover. And then right here in the corner starts off the Brad Meltzer run of the Justice League of America. And here on the second row continues the uh, Brad Meltzer Justice League of America series and goes all up to volume 9. But of course they never really numbered them so you had to watch inside which numbers contained which. And then the final volume of that series, they only printed a paperback version, which is insane. I don't know why they do that. And then we have some other good Justice League series. This is one of my favorites. And still only have read it once, but it is. And that is the Justice League Cry for Justice by James Robinson. And the first issue, maybe they mentioned the word justice a little too much. But what, where this story goes and takes from the characters and everything is really good, in my opinion. And I don't know. I haven't read too much from James Robinson, but really one of his greatest work, I would think. And Adam and Green Lantern are badasses in this one. And then what spins out of Cry for Justice is Justice League Rise and Fall. A much more Green Arrow centric story. Then we have uh, Justice League Generation Lost volumes 1 and 2. So this is the complete series of that. And why I bought it is because it tied into the Brightest Day event. So I want to know how Brightest Day affected all of the characters. I think the story I'm missing is the Green Arrow ones. But yeah, if you recognize at least two or three characters of this, maybe you could jump onto this. Then the Seven Soldiers of Victory by Grant Morrison. It goes through uh, seven titles in total, and it jumps in between characters, and the characters never meet up, but together, somehow, they end up saving the universe, or the world. And... Uh, yeah, that is the pitch for that series, you would be interested in that, if you ever heard of the title. And then we have uh, Wonder Woman by John Byrne. Gonna start reading this right after I finished the George Perez run. And then uh, Wonder Woman Odyssey by J. Michael Straczynski. And there we have a very good Alex Garner cover. And that's pretty much it for the standard size DC hardcovers. Okay, so the final shelf now on the DC bookshelf is, of course, the trade paperbacks. And I'm trying to hold off on as many paperbacks as I can, but some of the stories they just won't print in a hardcover or oversized edition. So this is what I'm stuck with for now. And to the farthest left, I actually can't get out the book from its place, but that is the Batman Gotham by Gaslight which is going to get a animated ad adaptation soon. And next to it is the Batman and Black Casebook, which is basically the stories that Grant Morrison took from to inspire to writing Batman R.I.P. And then there's the Birth of a Demon, which is all the three demon tales, the Bride and Demon and Son of Demon and so on. And then there's the Batman v... Man Who Laughs by Ed Brubaker, which is uh, it's a little overrated, I would say, but it is the modern introduction into the first encounter with the Joker. 
and then there's of course the standard uh, Jeff Loeb, uh, Tim Sale, Batman books, uh, Long Halloween, Dark Victory and Haunted Night and Haunted Night till this day I am uncertain of if it should be first or last and then there's the uh, a death uh, in the family which is of course the death of the second Robin and Batman Contagion and Batman Legacy which is basically companions and events taking place uh, in between I think the Batman by Doug Mensch era and up to Batman uh, wrote No Man's Land and of course they published them all in different eras so there's different logos here so we have Cataclysm wrote No Man's Land 1 and 2 and the complete volumes 1 to 4 of Road to No Man's Land, which should be all of the issues involved in uh, tie-ins or whatnot into the No Man's Land tale. Then there's uh, Batman by Ed Brubaker, Volumes 1 and 2. And Volume 2, I think, is a complete double dip for me because I think all the material in that one is in Batman Bruce Wayne Murder. And, a, or maybe it was Fugitive, but yeah, it's a complete double dip that I know. And then there's a really good surprise for me when I read it, and that is Batman War Games, Volumes 1 and 2. Really a Stephanie Brown sort of tale of her becoming the, what is now, fifth Robin or something. And then going on to her own identity. And then we have Batman Under the Red Hood and Red Hood uh, Lost Days. And... One of these were some of the first books that I actually picked up, and that was Batman Beyond Hush and Industrial Revolution, just because I was familiar with the Batman Beyond animated series at the time. And then there's the New 52 weekly series, and those were Batman Eternal, The Future's End, and Earth 2 World's End, all of which I loved, but... They hadn't perfected the formula. Future's End was close, but what really was good was Batman and Robin Eternal. And then there's the Neil Adams, Dennis O'Neill, Green Lantern, Green Arrow. And then Huntress Year One here. I was really interested in the character Huntress there for a while, so I went ahead and bought this. And this is basically just her origin story. And next to that is uh, Jim Kruger's and Alex Ross Justice, which I really hope they would reprint this in a sort of a deluxe size edition at least. They have already made an absolute, so I don't think we'll see that again, but it would be nice to have a hardcover edition of that. Then there's the uh, JLA by starting off with Grant Morrison and then goes into a lot of different writers. And this is a complete set as, as of now, and we almost made it to a complete set with the same logo, but damn them to hell. We couldn't finish off Volume 9 with the same logo. Then here's the Justice League of America trade paperback I was talking about to finish off the Brad Meltzer star of Justice League of America. And then there's the two Greg Rucka Wonder Woman volumes. And that's it for my DC books on this shelf. Okay, so now we're in the living room. And here's, as I said, all of the Vertigo, Image, and other independent publishers' comic books. And we start off with the Omnibus. Here's the Animal Man by Grant Morrison. I read this first in a trade paperback format, and I loved it. It was a two-day read or something and yeah it, it is something that everybody should read it is very much written before its time when it's when it comes to superhero comics and then of course we have the sandman omnibus and oh what a noise uh, and i chose to go with the omnibus format just because i wanted to collect the whole thing as soon as possible of course there is the alternative that is the Absolute versions and of course the trade paperbacks is always there for you, but I went ahead and went with the omnibus Then we have the sleeper omnibus by Ed Brubaker and Sean Phillips. I Really should give this a reread before 
for because the first time I did not understand it completely, I should be honest. And then we have Brian Sorello's uh, and Eduardo Rizzo's 100 bullets. So this was a, a lucky buy from one of my friends that had collected all of the five volumes, but he never finished reading them and he went in and sold them to me. So I'm very grateful for that. And then we have the Books of Magic by Neil Gaiman. And if you recognize the character, well, he came out before the other one. So that's an interesting plot. Uh, let's see here. Day Tripper by Fabio Mona and Gabriel Ba. Um, nice concept on uh, the joy of living, I guess. And the twist in each and every issue. And then we have Death by Neil Gaiman. It, is, it's, uh, it has some of the issues collected in the Salmon Omnibus, then some Death miniseries also within it. Then there's the DM Said by Brian Wood. And I was su surprisingly enough, I like this a lot. It, it is from a political standpoint, and it's the ch change of Manhattan and everything being under martial law or whatever you should call it. The states is split in half, basically. But yeah, very much recommended. And then we have Fables by Bill Willingham. And as you can see, I've not collected all of the deluxe editions yet, I've collected up to volume 8. And I'm planning to continue to do so, but there is so much stuff coming out now, but I'm very fond of this series. And then, to the right, we have Invisibles by Grant Morrison. That is, uh, Chaos Magic, Matrix stuff, uh, I don't know how to describe it, this is craziest work, and by some, his greatest work also. And on the second shelf, continuing, we have volumes 3 and 4 of Invisibles, collecting the whole thing. So it's either that option or the Omnibus, I would think, nowadays. I think we might have made a paperback reprint by now. And then we have some more Morrison Deluxe Editions. So I bought Kid Eternity and the Kill Your Boyfriend. Deluxe editions, but I think there's more on the way and maybe more that has come out But those were the titles that interested me then we have scalp deluxe edition by Jason Aaron and For the longest time I didn't pick it up and I thought that no this is nothing for me and By the time I went ahead and picked up the first four volumes I Went ahead and read them and then I had to wait for the fifth volume it was so good. TV series worthy, absolute, but of course Faye would screw it up. And then we have Sweet Tooth by Defamir, volumes 1, 2, and 3, the complete Sweet Tooth series. And volume 1 is actually signed and sketched by Lemire. Then we have uh, Brian K. Vaughan's Why the Last Man. I think it's his first greatest hit when it comes to comic books, and rightfully so. It is amazing, I think. Of course, I only like most of the things, only read it once, but should really want to get back into this. It was phenomenal. Uh, up here we have the V for Vendetta trade paperback, just because can't fit on the shelf. And then the lately acquired American Vampire hardcovers, volumes 1 to 6. And Scott Snyder and Raphael Albuquerque, I flipped through the pages, nice artwork, and of course Scott Snyder's early work is promising. Then we have The Dark Knight by Paul Dini and Eduardo Risso. This is, of course, of the mugging of Paul Dini and the story around it on 
getting back on track with his life after the incident. Then we have the Millennium Trilogy, which is, it's called in Sweden anyways, and that is the girl with the dragon tattoo and the girl who played with fire and the girl who kicked the hornet's nest. And then we have Garth Ennis and Steve Dillon's Preacher, collected editions, hardcover. I recently started to watch the TV show and so far I'm liking it. I was really worried that they wouldn't make Preacher as it is, but it's pretty, pretty close. And of course, this is like my top five most epic tales when it comes to indie comics, so yeah. Then we have Lieber Mayo's Suiciders, bought this just to see more Lieber Mayo artwork, but the story is um, it's decent. And then of course we have Scott Snyder's and Sean Murphy's The Wake. Okay, so now we're out of image titles, I would think, and we start off with all the other independent comic book companies. There's a little mismatch here. I don't even know which company published Rachel Rising, the omnibus here. But Terry Moore really haven't read anything from him before and great read. Then we have from Gen Press, the High School of the Dead full color edition omnibus, volumes 1 and 2. And... Uh, don't you dare judge me. This is a great zombie series, actually, and it's uh, the manga book is much less fan servicey than the the anime itself. But I don't dare open up this book in a review video still. And I'm a huge Assassin's Creed fan, and therefore I went and bought this one, the uh, Ankh of Isis trilogy, and they should have a second one unless they decided not to publish them in hardcover versions anymore. Then we have the Underwater Welder by Lemire once again and decent but I think I'm not in the uh, right time in my life where I should read this and appreciate it as I think most people has. And then we have from Boom Studios, Irredeemable. And this is a superhero story all by itself. And it is truly awesome. And artwork inside and is stunning. Just take one page here, maybe. Yeah. It is awesome. Then we have the Cape Deluxe Edition, a uh, complete series of it, and then we go to IDW's TMNT, the ongoing series, collect collected editions. And uh, I never thought I would get a hold of all of these, just because Volume 1 here always got out of print, but here they are, and looking forward to follow this ongoing Turtle series. And uh, then we have Lock and Key. The regular size uh, hardcover editions. There is the Masterworks, which I am kind of sort of want to have, but I don't know. I've only read it once, and maybe I should keep these. These are actually pretty damn nice. And then next to them from Arkea, we have Lantern City, which is only 12 issues worth in these three hardcovers, so, but it is the complete series and they're pretty nice hardcovers and blacked out pages and everything. So this is your steampunk story if you want to get into something like that. And then these two uh, from Wizard Entertainment are not comic book book series per se, but these are... Uh, published uh, ar uh, articles of different artists that they had a spotlight on. So this is obviously Jim Lee and you get his kind of bio and story and sketches going back to the 80s and I don't think I can find a page like that right now but 
should make an overview of this actually just to show you the artwork inside because seeing that old kind of artwork from your favorite creator really puts it in perspective when it comes to the process of um, getting to evolve your artwork and this edition was Mark Silvestri obviously. Then we have the from Only Press the Bunker volumes one to four. So that is the complete series. And once I got a hold of the last volume, I reread them all in one day. It is epic and would make a good TV show, but a short one at that. Then we have Letter 44 by Charles Soul. And it is very dialogue heavy, but it's sort of interstellar versus arrival. Yeah, that's a good mixture, uh, I think, of describing that. It's interstellar mixed with uh, arrival, pretty much. Then from a Swedish publisher, Kim W. Anderson, we have the complete Love Hurts paperback, which are just short, short stories of love tales basically and they each have a dark twist to them so there's kind of a horror element into that then the star wars books which is nothing more than star wars darth vader and the ghost prison and this little kind of prose novel book but it is actual artwork inside of the uh, Dark Empire Trilogy. And then next to it is just the Star Wars Omnibus, the complete saga, which is the paperback versions of episode 1 to 6. And here on the first to left bookshelf, it is pretty much empty at the moment. It keeps only the DVDs and these manga books. So I had to stack up the shelves a little different, just these manga books doesn't take much of a space, but the Absolute Editions does, so we're coming to those at some point. And starting off we have I'm a Hero, which is a zombie book, and very special one at that. I think this is my, f if not third or fourth zombie series I have in my collection in total, but it's good variety within them, I would say. And then we have uh, One Punch Man, volumes 1 to 11. And One Punch Man is... I haven't seen the anime, but the, the manga book is pretty funny. And it's easy to, to take in within all of the other stuff you're reading. And the same goes for Ultraman. You can see here volumes 1 to 8. And here you have your classic action hero just and cool different designs coming in e each and every volume basically and other heroes taking on the name of Ultraman so that is nice and then here we have start off of the three in one editions of Yu-Gi-Oh by Kazuki Takahashi and that is a series that is very close to art because I think I've followed the series all up until the latest generation, I would say. Then I completely stopped because the game is, isn't even a reflection of itself anymore to what it started to be. Okay, so now we are under the IDW and other independent comic book shelf again. And they will continue with the volume 10 or... 11 by the three and one of Yu-Gi-Oh! and then going into Yu-Gi-Oh! R which is Rebirth or Revelations or something I don't really know what it should stand for and then we have Yu-Gi-Oh! GX, Yu-Gi-Oh! 5Ds and Yu-Gi-Oh! Seal that is what I pronounce it as anyways and then just a manga sampler and I don't know I these aren't the, exactly as the anime series itself. They take all the characters from the anime series, but then they sort of mix and max their 
continuity and uh, the relations to each other. But I guess it's so it wouldn't be as predictable as the anime might could be. So here is the shelf where I keep my Swedish published books and some other books just that I had to put somewhere to make it all fit. And yeah, all of these to the left, uh, square bound comic book albums. I don't think I can get out each and every of the titles, but I'll get out my favorite title that is Elvis. And uh, these are by Tony Kronstam, and it is hilarious. In my opinion, he hits the sweet spot each and every time with his character Elvis. And some of the, of the books, I don't remember which ones. I, I know that some of them are some sketches by him within him. And let's see here. I think maybe yeah this is from comic-con uh, two years ago maybe and so we drew, drew Elvis and then he drew me as a dog and there's the signature and yeah that was a good time I, I rarely get starstruck when it comes to Swedish Swedish personalities and everything, but him uh, was, was such a big fan, so I might have been a bit starstruck when I saw him. Then we have um, Herman Hedning, Marvin Meathead, and these are also some of the books I ordered online, but I think one of them should be signed by Jonas Darnell, the creator. Yeah, this one. So this is the Motor Massacre album, and within it, I had him drew a fat man, which is uh, Herman as Batman, basically. And then his latest editions, which is the Kickstarter projects that he started off to replace all of these paperbacks that collects all of the comic strips and um, issue numbers that he has published uh, up till 2007 but he paused this project and then started with these hardcover editions instead to collect his whole run and I'm all for that you know I'm a hardcover collector so no problem in getting that and more and more sketches and signatures I know you haven't ha heard of this, probably, so it's really no big deal, but for me, it, it is awesome. There, uh, another Batman figure. I should really ask him to draw something else to the next Kickstarter project that arrives. And then from uh, a part uh, company, we have Rockman Lefist, and it is such a shame that this... I don't think this has an English translation, but this is just uh, trippy as hell. It's like the Swedish version of Austin Powers, I would say. But then stuff that actually do have a translation out is Elena. And this is the movie variant hardcover, but it's uh, written by Kim W. Anderson once again. And... Um, yeah, let's see here. That was a good example for a page, I would say. So, it's kind of a horror thriller-esque, but it takes place on school grounds and everything. And yeah, what to say about Elena? Go check it out. And then his latest series, which is Astrid, this volume one out of I don't know how many volumes he's planning to do this but this was another Kickstarter project and yet another science uh, and a sketch within it and the latest Swedish series that I picked up was Way by uh, Sara Bergmark and Carl Jonsson and 
it was pretty good. It's about um, North mythology and everything. And then, n not related at all to all of these books that I just showed you, we have The Dark Knight Returns by Frank Miller, the complete or collector's edition. And next to it, The Master Race by Frank Miller, Azarello, Kubert, and Klaus Janssen. And this is just the filler part that came with the issue number 9 of The Dark Knight Free Master Race. And should de really do an overview with both of these in the same video at some point. It was a great series in my opinion. Let's go to the next shelf. So here starts off the Absolute Editions and I've just spread them around as they fit. Because of these doors that I have, you really can't place them as you want them all the time. But this works out for now. And some of my favorites here, all the titles that is Batman of course. So we have the very first Absolute for me, uh, Absolute Hush. And uh, Batman and Robin by Grant Morrison. Then there's Batman Incorporated by Morrison. And Absolute Batman Court of Owls. So when it comes to Hush, I think I have four versions total. And there's more versions on the way. But I am gonna buy. <laughs> and the same goes for Court of Owls. There's a noir version on the way. Then we have Superman, Batman, Absolutes 1 and 2. And both of the stories published within this one has animated movies, adaptations of it. So it's um, the adaptation of Public Enemies and Supergirl. And those are Public Enemies and Apocalypse. And there's Wheatley joining us and leaving us. Then we have uh, Superman... For Tomorrow by Azarello and Lee and it's really overrated if somebody likes this please tell me but of course I like the artwork but the story is lacking the story that's not lacking is Grant Morrison's All-Star Superman which was a I'm very glad that I got a hold of and since it is out of print once again I believe and then Absolute Infinite Crisis, which is the third version of the story. And yeah, it's just awesome and nice to have it in a oversized format to look into. Then we have Absolute Final Crisis. And it comes with the 3D glasses and everything. And then Kevin Smith's Green Arrow Run. Which is very dialogue heavy, actually. I never read anything by Kevin Smith before this, but I didn't know that he had so much things to talk about. <laughs> and then Brian Azzarello and Cliff Chang's Absolute Wonder Woman Volume 1 and Volume 2 is on its way next year. Then we have a project that I really much like, but DC discontinued it, and that was the Graphic Inc, the DC comic art of whatever artist. And the ones that they published was the ones with Darwin Cook and Frank Quietly. And I think my favorite was the Ivan Reyes one, just because I like his kind of artwork, kind of a Jim Lee... Neil Adams style to it and uh, yes yeah, they were gonna publish one with um, Gary Frank and Jim Lee but discontinued them for some reason I don't know if the format didn't sell well enough but they're like collections of er, not only their main DC work but also the independent stuff that they made before it so really sad to not have seen the continue of this line. And then, out of nowhere, we have from Only Press the Six Guns Deluxe Editions by Colin Bunn. So, volumes 1, 2, and 3. And there should be three more to complete the series. 
haven't read it in any other format, but that would make up for the whole series in oversized edition. And then we have, again, from DC, the noir books. But I haven't been much of a completionist when it comes to these noir books, just because I thought I'll buy the series that actually amuses me. So I have Killing Joke, Batman Hush, once again, so this fourth wor version that we see in this video, and uh, The Black Mirror by, once again, uh, Scott Snyder and Jock and Frank Avila. And yeah, done with that bookshelf, let's check out the Image Comic bookshelf. Okay, so here we have the start of the image shelf, and like most of it, trying to keep it in an alphabetical order. So, first off, naturally, we have Alex plus Ada, the complete deluxe edition, and I like the story, I like everything with an AI concept in it, really, and, but the... The lack of it is in the images itself and the drawings, but I still enjoyed it. And uh, then next to it we have the Aphrodite 9 complete series by David Finch, Matt Hawkins and Stefan Sedgwick. And I don't know what it was about this book, but everybody wanted it at some point and it was damn near impossible to find the hardcover edition at that time, but very glad to have got a hold of it. Then we have the Image Big Art Sex Criminals, which is hysterical at some points, and I'm actually looking, looking forward for a second volume, but I'll probably have to reread this one just to get a sense of where we are at in the story. And then of course we have Chu, and I think Chu is loved all over the community. I don't think I've ever heard someone talk anything bad about Chu. So this is the Omniwar editions, so the normal deluxe size ones that collects uh, 10 issues each. So there's also the paperbacks that collects 5 issues each and then of course the Smurgs Board edition that is collecting 20 issues each. But I thought this was a good size to, to go through and you wouldn't have to wait too long to get the next book. It was about a, a year in between. And then uh, Jonathan Hickman's uh, East of West and really liking it but it is Jonathan Hickman so when I got Volume 2 I had to reread Volume 1 right away just to get a sense of where we are in the story and everything. Uh, Five Ghosts Volume 1 never I didn't don't know what they did with this if, if this is coming back or not. Featured it in overview videos like most of these titles here. I think actually each and every one of them has its own video. Except for Happy by Grant Morrison. And Happy, I, I think I described it to a friend like Die Hard with LSD involved. Just because the main character would see a tiny blue horse. And then of course we have Invincible volumes 1, 2, 11, and that, that is almost the complete series of Invincible. There's only one more volume expected to come out of this series in the Ultimate Collection edition, and it is some of the best drama I've read since Ultimate Spider-Man. And uh, the pitch for it is always, has been for me at least, uh, imagine if Peter Parker was raised by Superman. And then we have uh, Lazarus by Greg Rocca, and uh, as you can see, I have the non-matching editions, but I am thinking about fixing that soon with replacing Volume 1, but we'll see. And uh, then we have Manhattan Projects, once again by Jonathan Hickman, had to reread the first volume just to get into the second. But it is a very nice read, and I like the history and the twist they try to wrap around historical events. And then we have a sadly much ignored series within the community, The Morning Glories Deluxe Editions by Nick Spencer. And these are 
addictive when it comes to reading them because each of them has a twist or a cliffhanger but makes you want to continue all the way but at the same time it has the problem of the lost tv series and that is just leaving too many questions so continuing from morning glories with morning glories volumes three and i'm still waiting for volume four they have the paperbacks that is published enough to collect for a fourth volume but they never seem to release it or announce it and next to it is Nailbiter. Uh, didn't think much about it, actually and Grant Morrison's Nameless which is like Interstellar with a thriller twist to it I, I don't know I'm comparing much to Interstellar right now it feels like and Outcast by Kirkman which is like Kirkman's version of The Exorcist and Peter Panzerfaust that is sadly never going to see a volume 2 hardcover edition so if you want to finish off that series you have to buy the paperbacks then Rat Queens deluxe edition don't know what's happening to that series right now and then uh, lately finished collecting Revival volumes 1 to 4 in total and it is a so I think you can count this as a zombie series, only that the people that is coming back from dead doesn't look as gruesome or anything. They look just as exact as it was before they died and went away. And that's one of the things that is unique for Revival, I would say. Then of course Brian K. Vaughan's Saga, you, I don't think there's a collection that doesn't have this in it at or if it don't, it is on the way, probably. Yeah, everybody, everybody reads Saga. And then, Southern Bastards by Jason Aaron. And I have it here within the deluxe editions, just because this should have had an oversized version of it. I think it was Jason Latour that didn't want to see his artwork in oversized format. But it's a good book, and a volume two is on its way. Then we have Velvet by Brubaker and Steve Epting. Uh, it is complete as it is in this hardcover version and um, really much liked it. It's a noir spy story. And yeah, if you like that, if you've read the first uh, Ed Brubaker, Catherine Merrick omnibus or run, it is the same kind of thing within the environment, I would say. But yeah. Really much liked it. Then we have Wayward by Jim Sub, and recently picked up second volume, but I'll probably have to reread this one just to get the hang of it again, where we were in the story. But just opening up the pages here, it is glorious. Not just the artwork itself, but the coloring as well. Then we have The Wicked Plus The Divine, Volume 1. Volume 2 is coming out soon, or probably is out by the time you're watching this video. And yeah, looking forward to reading more of that. Then we go into the paperbacks. And I Kill Giants, I really wanted to have this in the hardcover format, but it is very much out of print and very expensive on eBay as of now. Uh, then we have uh, Image Shadowline Comeback, just because it's time travel. And then the hysterical uh, The Pro, which is a prostitute superhero. Or given superpowers, at least. And then Saga in paperback, so this is all collected in Volume 2, but I think I'll keep them just to see as how long the series actually goes and then sell them. And volume 7, which is continuing from volume 2 of the Luxe Size Edition. And then my image compendiums, which is nothing much to brag about. It is first volume of Spawn and three volumes, as of now, collected of The Walking Dead. And that is how I went into, com uh, not comics, but image. I've 
think that Walking Dead was the very first image title that I bought. And that's the image shelf. Okay, so we are finally here, or sadly here, depending on your opinion of this video. Uh, the final shelf for this year's collection video. And here are more oversized books, but not absolute. This is uh, library size editions and premier size and whatever they call their editions. It, depending on the company, it's a different name for all of them. But most of it is Dark Horse. And first to the left, we have the Fear Agents by Rick Remender. And didn't know anything about the title before I picked it up, but. I very much liked it, and the books are massive, and artwork inside is pretty good. Then we have The Massive by Brian Wood. Had to read more from him after uh, have, having read um, uh, DM Said. But DM said, I would say, is much more of a stronger series than the Massive. And you can't really see this book, but behind the Avatar books here, you have the Ninth Wave, which is a prequel series for the Massive. And then, of course, we have the Avatar series. And the f first books here, these five white ones with the white spine, is the art of the animated series. So the very first book here collects uh, artwork from the first three books or seasons of the Avatar series and they are beautiful to look at, at how they evolved uh, the series and what they took their inspiration from and then the following four are for the Legend of Korra series so they took uh, one book for each and every season of series. So the first one is of air. And then the second one is uh, spirit. And I don't think I made a overview videos of these books. These are actually kind of nice. And here we have change, which was my favorite season. And... In Total Panic, I thought it was the final season also. But yeah, Legend of Korra is... If you liked the Avatar series, the original one, you should give Legend of Korra a chance. At season one, they were still trying to find their footwork with a new Avatar character, I would think. And the final one, which is Balance. Then the later four Avatar The Last Airbender books is books that actually takes place in between both of the animated series. So these takes place in between Avatar The Last Bender and The Legend of Korra. So we have The Promise and The Search, which is the search for uh, Zuko's mom, and uh, The Rift, which is more of a Toph story, and Smoke and Shadow, which is uh, the return of some of the characters in the animated series. Then we have, uh, from Titan Books, Icons. And this is a good reference book. I go back to this sometimes when I'm drawing. And it is Icons of Jim Lee and collects his story and... Of course, lots and lots of sketches and the signs that is made through the years for different characters. Probably reviewer worthy as well, sometime in the future. Then we have an image title that I recently picked up, Artifacts Deluxe Edition. I would call this an absolute, but yeah, it was just beautiful to look at. I remember... I recognized one character and that was probably Aphrodite 9 and on that note I decided to pick it up and I looked it up afterwards and it is a complete series collected within this one so hopefully I shouldn't have any problem understanding the story and where it goes 
with the characters inside. And then we have Image by, no, or Black Science, the beginner's guide to entropy by Rick Remender. And the only downfall with this one is that it is a glued binding, but I think they had some problems with the first rendition of, of the book, so they had to make it a glued binding the second time around. And more Rick Remender books, Crawl Space, which is different kind of horror stories and Deadly Class. Awesome. And then we have an odd shaped book that I don't know how to store and that is The Private Eye by Brian K. Vaughan, the online comic that never should have gotten a hardcover printing, they said, or a physical printing. And The Complete Tokyo Ghost by, once again, Remender, and drawn by Sean Murphy. So th this is pretty much the Rick Remender shelf I'm hearing right now. And uh, The Assassin's Creed Complete Visual History. There are so many books of each and every Assassin's Creed game, and I love them, but I just couldn't find myself picking up all of them, so I went with the one that said The Complete Visual History instead of each and every rendition of the games. And then last but not least, we have uh, Dual Art, the Kazuki Takahashi Yu-Gi-Oh! illustrations. And yeah, it's beautiful. Nice to see the... that's a good page. The rendition of, of each and every character drawn from the creator himself and how he draws them nowadays. So, that's it.